to Montana, Senator Steve Daines, what he makes of all of this. Uh, Senator, very good to have you. Uh, I don't know how these folks got in there. I don't know if they're allowed to get into the way they did. Most have been arrested and taken away. But it just shows you how volatile things are ahead of Netanyahu's remarks tomorrow. Are you worried? Well, I, I know the, the Capitol is virtually going to be in lockdown. They've already got the great big uh, wall set up around the Capitol as a precaution. We're expecting perhaps tens mm -hmm. of thousands of protesters show up. But look, you know, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are enabling of this this moment. To think that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are going to stand up and not show up for the prime minister of Israel in a time when Israel is in great need. They're vulnerable at this moment. The fact that Kamala Harris will not be there for a head of state speech. Of course, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, will be there. Republicans are going to be there. But the fact that Kamala is basically giving him the cold shoulder is enabling these protesters to really amp up what they're talking about. This is a moment of moral clarity that is needed uh, to stand with Israel when they just su suffered their worst terror attack in their nation's history. The Iranians went after them here uh, in, in April. I mean, this is a moment to stand with Israel, not to give them the stiff arm. Well, Kamala Harris, as you know, we're running for president. She's locked down this Democratic nomination very, very quickly. Um, what do you think of the whole process? Well, look, the Democrats were in incredible disarray, and they had a huge problem because voters said that Joe Biden's too old to be president. But then they said Kamala Harris is too liberal to be president. But they had to pick Kamala because they would have had a revolt amongst their very liberal, radical, progressive base had they passed over Kamala. Look, the New York Times, just in the last couple of days, they ranked the top 10 you know, possible uh, nominees to, to substitute for Joe Biden. Kamala Harris was ranked 10th last in terms of electability. She was rated the least yeah. electable of the top 10, which says but a lot. Are you worried the that she might be more, uh, I hear you, Senator, but that, that she might be more alert, uh, able to form a complete sentence and go after Donald Trump as a pretty, you know, uh, in your face prosecutor and litigate the case of January 6th and all of this against Donald Trump? and say, there's the convicted felon, and, and, and here's my contrast, how I pick a guy like that apart. What do you make of that matchup, if that's the approach she takes? Because she seemed to telegraph that today. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Remember, you know, Joe Biden was the, the kid that grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, the Irish Catholic kid. Kamala Harris is from San Francisco. She's a San Francisco liberal, a San Francisco radical. She wants to ban fracking. She's the border czar of Joe Biden here, who doesn't believe that it should be illegal to cross into our country uh, with the 10 million coming across our southern border. Uh, she has got radical policies. So I think what this will do is I think Joe Biden's age was somewhat shadowing and overshadowing the horrible policies of this administration. Now with Kamala Harris, it's all exposed. It's no longer an age discussion. It. It's a policy debate. I think that's very good for President Trump and for Republicans down ballot. We shall see. The battle is on, as you said. Uh, Senator, good seeing